Now I would like to invite. Uh, we have a keynote address attached to our IC, and that is by none other than Dr. Rolika Bansal, whom I came to know few years back, just uh, as a fellow of Dr. Santosh. She finished a fellowship in two thousand twenty-one, and now she has an in identity of her own. And I'm very proud to say that she has backed so many awards. I think आप लोगों में से जो भी AIUS की program book देखते होंगे या जो भी you all must be knowing she is backing so many awards, and she is uh, also the recipient of uh, this award, Sujata uh, Savitri Rao Award, uh, and she is going to speak on local local tumor control by adjuvant plaque breaking therapy in conjunctival melanoma. So becoming a keynote speaker at such a young age and being dynamic is a really a proud point. And I always tell her that she is really going to do good in future. And beside, despite of that, she is very modest and very humble. That I want to add. Thank you, Rolly. Thank you so much, ma'am. This uh, lecture is actually uh, this keynote lecture is actually very weird for me because uh, first of all, it's in front of people way senior than me, so uh, I do not really, I feel very no, odd in giving like a keynote that. lecture. And at the same time, I'm kind of taking it as a blessing that I'm presenting my first keynote lecture in front of all of you, yes. and uh, you all. <laughs> so I'll proceed with my topic. and i thank my mentor for giving me the opportunity to uh, witness these cases and the beautiful surgeries as well so the topic is local tumor control by adjuvant plaque breaking therapy in conjunctival melanoma so conjunctival melanoma happens to be a rare lethal malignancy less than 1% of all whole body melanomas are conjunctival melanomas the incidence ranging from 0.4 to 0.8 per million quite rare and at the same time a variety of treatment modalities have been followed primary surgical excision with or without cryotherapy adjuvant radiotherapy enucleation even radical measures like excentration and genetics guided targeted therapy are also available so uh, a lot of studies have been done with different combinations of the same and this is one of the very uh, vibrant studies which is a large a large uh, study done on 288 patients which showed that there was local recurrence in 19% cases an accumulative local recurrence of 5% by 1 year and 37% by 10 year so this is quite a high incidence and again uh, shields et al have also shown that local tumor control uh, local tumor recurrence was 74% and you can see over here that melanoma related lymph node metastasis and systemic metastasis was 25% so this is quite a high number and we observed that this was because there were variable uh, interventions that were put in so we thought that why not uh, try to see with whether we can streamline the entire process and we can eliminate the concept of radical measures so we went on to uh, do a study wherein there were primary surgical excision done with cryotherapy included and adjuvant radiotherapy also given so uh, primary plaque brachytherapy refers to when we have examined the corneoscleral invasion on clinical examination with support of imaging that is asoct and ultra biomicroscopy and secondary plaque brachytherapy is that when we have done the excision we send for histopathology and we know that there is base involvement so we go ahead with brachytherapy and we must remember that high rate of local tumor recurrence is related to high rate of metastasis also so we conducted a retrospective interventional study in which 15 patients were assessed it's a small number but considering the rarity it's quite a high number at one particular center by a single surgeon so we saw a variety of presentations we saw lesions which were dark pigmented flat and elevated lesions as these and with a prominent feeder vessel that's how conjunctival melanoma is usually presented this is a 16 year old boy here with intrinsic vascularity on the surface and you can see scleral fixity which can be checked with a bud as we do in our clinics and corneal involvement must be noted in these patients clinically and as i said ultrasound biomicroscopy showed evident scleral invasion and even orbital invasion in few of our cases over here you can see that the maximum width was 9.9 and maximum height of 1.13 just quite a significant one in these cases usually we resort to enucleation and asoct also confirmed the corneal scleral invasion uh, as i said that secondary brachytherapy was done after histopathology confirmation that was the lesion was seen as a pigmented lesion with full thickness involvement spindle to epithelioid atypical cells were seen with cytoplasmic melanin pigments 
and pigmented lesion with base involvement was confirmed. So after all of this, including immunohistochemistry, we just observed that what would be the demography. Median age was 35 years and we had our cases presenting from an 8 year old to a 65 year old. So you can see a variety so it can present at any age and mostly they, uh, they were arising from primary acquired melanosis in 47% cases in our study and nevus 40% with de novo lesions being 13% as well. The tumor diameter varied from 4 to 17 mm and tumor height varied from 1.5 to 6 mm. So you can imagine that's a, a quite a variation. This is a, a surgical intervention that I'm displaying over here. There's a 65 year old male who came with extensive spread. He had had two excision biopsies elsewhere, recurrent conjunctival melanoma and the AJCC staging was CT3C. So you can see over here that as we went on with surgical intervention, we took 4 mm clinically clear margins. In this particular patient, lateral rectus was also involved. So we had to assess it uh, on the basis of uh, MRI and the lesion was excised. Very slow and meticulous dissection was done and lamellar sclerectomy was performed. Uh, very carefully we had to do that so that we don't cause a scleral perforation and the involved lateral rectus was also excised. The residual pigment was excised and the lateral rectus was reinserted to its original location. The hot plaque was placed over the lesion that was over the uh, surface and uh, the dosimetry was kept as 2 mm depth. Since this was a diffuse lesion, we had to do two rotations of the plaque so that we cover the entire surface area. And uh, we also went ahead with double free stock cryotherapy for the edge and the base in order to make sure that the entire tumor has been excised. And surface reconstruction was done with amniotic membrane graft and glue. And to make sure that we don't get simplified, we even did simplifron ring insertion and tarsorophy. So the plaque type that were used were notch or round and the dose was 10,000 centigrade kept for the apex dose. The depth was 2 to 3 mm depth and the dose duration ranged from 11.5 to 74 hours. You can see that this particular patient had beautiful uh, um, post-operative outcome and this is after 8 years that the patient who had developed recurrence within 3 to 4 months had developed no recurrence after eight years. And this also was a lesion. I think this is one of the best uh, pictures that I have ever seen of the post-operative outcomes of conjunctival melanoma and SERS cases. And all our cases were CT3A to C that were globe invasion, eyelid invasion, and orbital and extension also. And we had 100% local tumor control, vision salvage, eye salvage, and life salvage as well. So the previous studies that have been done have shown that they have used variable plaque that is like ruthenium, strontium, iodine. We use a symmetrical ruthenium plaque in all the cases and uh, we also saw that there were no recurrences in our cases however they have been shown earlier in few of the cases probably because they were larger sample size as well and uh, we had a mean follow-up outcome of 8.1 years where all the patients are doing extremely well and all have survived so that's uh, quite a success and the multimodal management is what we advocate that is excise the lesion with 4 mm clinically clear margins do a nice lamellar sclerectomy. Alcohol keratoepithelectomy must be done for the corneal component. Double freeze thaw cryotherapy should be done for the edge and the base. And adjuvant plaque brachytherapy must be performed to make sure that there is no recurrence with confirmation of histopathology as well. And this will lead to excellent local tumor control with vision salvage, eye salvage, and life salvage in all the cases. We are still following up on the cases. We haven't left them. This was a study which was done last year. So at the follow-up of 9.1 years nearly, we still have no recurrences and no metastasis in our cases. Thank you very much. Excellent talk, uh, Dr. Rolika. So, uh, just one question. Uh, so, you are placing plaque immediately after excision or you allow some, you know, time to heal uh, the surface also? Right, ma'am. So, in the cases where we are very much sure about the orbital, uh, the corneoscleral invasion, we do intraoperative uh, immediate plaque brachytherapy. We don't wait for the uh, healing process, as you mentioned. However, in cases where there is doubtful in, uh, involvement of the base, we wait for the 
uh, histopathology report. But whenever the histopathology report comes as positive, we plan the brachytherapy within a week only. So we don't no, it's delay. it's not about the histopathology, it's about the healing. No ma'am, we don't So wait. there is no healing issue when you straight away go ahead with, no. you know, primary uh, plaque therapy after the excision. In fact, we have observed that uh, in the cases where the uh, excision was done elsewhere and we have received cases which are not a part of the study, but we have actually felt that uh, the healing causes uh, uh, an increase in the depth also. Since the fibrosis occurs, we are not able to achieve exact 2 mm depth. So we have, we, are, we always have fear of recurrence in those cases because we cannot re-excise that area and then put the plaque. So in this, we've already put the plaque and then we reconstruct the surface so it heals out very well. So these are mostly partially excised cases, no? All the of these cases are all completely where you are giving uh, the brachytherapy. You don't know microscopically, no? Yes, ma'am. Microscopic involvement is what we rule out and that is why we do the radiotherapy. And you have shown good series of cases, almost all varieties. So this is over how long uh, period? Like because melanoma yes. is hardly seen uh, yes. uh, tumor, I must say. This is a 10 year study now. So, this is over 10 years you saw these yeah. many because we hardly I think Dr. Seema must be saying how many cases in a year. I mean uveal melanoma is very common yeah. but uh, conjunctival melanoma they are very few in number. Right. We don't see that many. I That's mean, why it's quite rare and yeah. uh, we have seen Probably this is over 10 years. Cases in a year. yeah. So what are the what was the uh, histopathological type of in all the cases that you saw, it was it epithelioid cell type? Yes, ma'am. There was a mixed variety. Epithelioid was also there. There was all mixed variety, ma'am. I just have one last question. So, do you do cryo to the basin or in cases where you're doing a sclerectomy? Uh, so, partial in the cases where we do a partial sclerectomy, we have to be very careful about cryo cryoing exactly at the base. So when we are anticipating that we have cleared off the base completely, this is of course a very clinical intra-op decision. That time we don't uh, we don't do cryo to the base. When we when like we are very definite and sure that uh, we have taken off the. Uh, of course, as you are right, absolutely right. There's no way to identify whether we have cleared off the cells as uh, completely no, because, or not. Uh, why I ask this question because anyways you're doing brachy and that's going to cover that area. Right. So there's really no need for cryotherapy, you know, because it's only going to increase the problems with healing and you know so yes. i was just wondering why the cryo if you're doing the brachytherapy this was in fact a question that was even discussed in iso ma'am like you know uh, there are people who in fact defer cryo completely they are we even uh, went through the studies which have covered cryotherapy initially mm -hmm. so they have said that uh, cryotherapy lands are causing inflammation post operatively but uh, in even in the OSSN cases or even the conjunctival melanoma cases, we do cryo. We have not seen any post-operative inflammation coming up. In fact, the surface looks pretty much smooth and it uh, heals out very well. No, my, oh yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> no, you. I was wondering that uh, even if visibly uh, tumor is left, uh, we are not. If suppose we don't uh, damage the integrity of the sclera, mm -hmm. and even if uh, visibly uh, you know tumor uh, tissue is left, uh, after all we are for doing brachytherapy. So right. why to uh, do you know partial sclerectomy unnecessarily and you know compromising the scleral integrity? So what is the uh, need? I'm not uh, getting that. Ma'am, that's absolutely right. What you're saying is that, uh, as you're saying that since we're doing brachytherapy, then what's the point of doing a partial sclerectomy? Yeah, what's the point of doing Yeah, because it's a localized high-dose radiotherapy. You know? Right. And that also 10,000 uh, centigrade as the apex yeah. dose. It's just that when we went through the literature, as I mentioned, even Shields et al. have mentioned that the possibility of the uh, cells being left over with cryotherapy cannot be unnoticed. So their their query or the statement was it's better to do cryotherapy than to leave it. So it's like a kind of outweighing the two, whether we should do or we should not do for their statement itself is that if we do it, then it's good enough. If we don't do it, we might be missing on some cells. And if we get recurrences in these cases, then it is, uh, you know, kind of uh, life, uh, risky to the life. So that's fair. It's kind of overdoing it. Yes, it know. is. Thank you, Rolika, for a very nice presentation and for very nicely answering your the queries. RP Center and the place where you are working, truthfully, they are places we look up to. 
I don't deny that I have not done these brachytherapies and all. And even today when I face a problem in my patient, my phone goes directly to ma'am. Ki ma'am, I've come across this patient and now you let me know what should I do. So, but still, see, uh, you, it, we are learning. Definitely. And you also have been blessed, I would say, to have Dr. Santosh Navar sir as your mentor. And now I'm sure sir is also must be feeling proud because you are equally providing him all the honor. I don't so know about that. Really <laughs> so nice. Thank you. Thank